This is the title of my talk, Indirect Evidence of Time Travel. I am from SN Bose Center, Calcutta. And the outline of the talk will be as follows. First, of course, I have to give a motivation. And then I will provide a general description of what is a mesoscopic setup. In this general description, I will explain to you that there will be a hierarchy of density of states and a hierarchy of friedel sum rule like formulas that connects density of states through scattering phase shifts. And then we will go to a particular case of this mesoscopic setup, which is the standard three probe setup, very well studied in mesoscopic physics. And we will show that certain members of the hierarchy can be designed to be negative there. And that is an experimental candidate that can act as an experimental candidate of electron electron attraction and also an indirect experimental evidence of travel back in time. We are actually talking about signal propagation back to the time back in time and then references. So motivation, of course, there are many physical phenomena where th that are still unexplained and where we vaguely guess that electron, two electrons attract each other to form a bound state. But exact mechanism is not known. So a, mecha a new mechanism to attract electrons is always very interesting. To quote some such phenomena, of course, we have heavy fermion superconductor, superconductors at high temperature, superconductivity in graphene, etc. And of course, this book, a recently published book in Springer talks about this time travel phenomena and so this uh, a new mechanism to attract electrons is also an indirect evidence of such an such a time travel that an electron can travel back in time. This book actually says that even information can travel back in time. It proves that even information can travel back in time. So this is a general mesoscopic setup where the sample is the shaded region. The sample only has some quantum states and electrons come and leave through these leads which could be quantum wires and uh, uh, one of these leads is drawn as a very special lead in the sense that it is an STM tip so its distance and contact to the sample can be varied. Now in this general setup one can have a hierarchy of density of states. So if you remove the leads, you can only have density of states and local density of states which we also find in textbooks. But once we have these leads, there can be a huge hierarchy of density of states and that is a purely mesoscopic phenomena. Now as I said that this lead is special, it can have four different roles. It is an STM tip. So first case it is that it does not make any contact and it also does not exchange any current but it can still locally perturb the electrostatic potential at a point R say in the sample. Case 2 is that it does not make a contact but it can exchange current through quantum tunneling. The idea is that the contact is so weak that it does not dis the lead does not disturb the states inside the sample. That is what we mean by no contact but current exchange through quantum tunneling. There is always some uh, it will always put up the states in the system but within a tolerance level you can say that they are not disturbed. Case 3 is that when it actually makes a contact and it becomes like any other lead so it is not interesting for us because we already have plenty of leads around. 
and case 4 is the famous experimental setup of Landauer three probe conductance which has been thoroughly studied experimentally and theoretically so it makes a contact but it does not exchange any current on the average no net current is exchanged because the chemical potential of the uh, lead is adjusted such that there can be some fluctuations but no net current is uh, drawn or given to the sample so that is sometimes referred to as a voltage lead and sometimes referred to as a decoherence lead source of decoherence etc so one can go into the literature vast literature and know all about this setup so first i give a brief introduction to the hierarchy of density of states and hierarchy of predel sum rule so this is the lowest member of the hierarchy what it means is that an electron from lead gamma is going to lead alpha at an energy E and through the point R. So that seems like a local version of quantum mechanics. And this tau LPT which is given by this complicated expression on the right hand side is the time spent by such an electron going from gamma to alpha at an energy E at the point R. And this ordering is important. This is S alpha gamma mod square is obviously the scattering cross section. S alpha gamma is the scattering amplitude. And this is a functional derivative with respect to the local potential. Now if I, I can remove this factor h bar and I rem can remove this factor s alpha gamma mod square in which case I get local partial density of states. It means an electron going from gamma to alpha at the point r how many states it encounters. So it is a count, it is a dimensionless quantity and it gives a count. Now that book says that this count can turn out to be negative which means the time spent by that electron can also be negative which means the time electron is actually moving back in time and in fact the electron can also carry a signal it can uh, the, even the wave packet moves back in time. Now uh, these three parameters I can Obviously, I will not have this quantity if I remove the leads gamma and alpha and once I have this quantity, I can average I can average if I average over I can average over any one of the three I can average any two of the three or I can average all of them and accordingly I will get different members of the hierarchy. So you see this is uh, partial density of states which means I have averaged over R. This is injectivity which means I have averaged over all the outgoing channels alpha. This is emissivity which means I have averaged over all the incoming channels comma. Accordingly you can have many other members and it is easy to interpret these members also and then this is injectance which means I have some uh, averaged over all the coordinates R and I have also averaged over all the outgoing channels alpha. Local density of states, states means I have averaged over all the incoming channels and also all the outgoing channels. Density of states means I have averaged over everything. Now this one you can simplify and you get this formula which is you see a functional derivative of the scattering phase shift along with some weight factors and that is your and uh, that gives the density of states which is your mesoscopic Friedel sum rule. 
now we can understand this substitution that a global shift in local potential is same as a shift in incident energy which means down shift in global potential uh, uh, by a small amount is equivalent to up shift of the incident energy but what appears here is not the global integration but only the sample integration and if i can if, if i can approximately write this then i get the friedel sum rule that you encounter in textbooks so if this approximation is good then friedel sum rule is good but normally in mesoscopic systems this approximation is bad but on the other hand this is a pretty useless formula because experimentally you cannot measure this theoretically you cannot calculate this because you never know what is the local potential at the point r of a sample but this one you can ex even experimentally detect if i do this substitution then i get this formula then this quantity you can even experimentally detect that was that has been detect, uh, detected in these experiments and of course you can also theoretically calculate now as we said our primary regime of interest will be this case 2 where there is no contact but there is a tunneling current being exchanged between the lead and the sample so let me explain only one of these terms the other terms can be accordingly interpreted what is this is is the quantum mechanical transmission amplitude from alpha to beta through the point r to which it is uh, which is the closest point from the tip beta in the sample so it is given by the injectivity of the lead alpha to the point remote point r and this these are new beta is the num, uh, is the states in the lead beta that are again unoccupied and this is a coupling parameter that couples the point r to the empty states in the lead beta which means this many electrons will be lost to lead beta from the point r that is what it means and that determines the emissivity of the lead alpha alpha to the lead beta now that should be in principle measurable but what can be directly measured has to do with the gamma to alpha conductance when this lead beta is present in this in this form if the lead beta is present in this form that it doesn't make a contact but it exchanges current gamma to alpha conductance is given by this expression so when you see when this coupling between uh, coupling to the empty states in lead beta is taken to zero then it is just the coherent conductance or the coherent transmission probability and once we couple this then uh, some electrons will be lost and that's a negative term as you can see it depends on the local partial density of states and what the book shows is that this quantity can be designed to be negative so i can remove i can always adjust this parameter t mod square i can always adjust this coupling parameter experimentally i can make it zero and then the conductance is just the coherent conductance in absence of the lead beta of the stm tip beta and if i put a finite coupling then the conductance will decrease 
you may say because of decoherence, you may say because of uh, some escape of coherent electrons, but as this book tells you that this quantity can be designed to be negative using something called pano resonance and then when we and then you see that will enhance the conductance so that will be that can be directly measured in an experiment because this quantity can be directly measured in an ex experiment in presence of coupling in absence of coupling it is a standard conductance measurement. Now we come to case 4 which is the famous Aronoff bohm uh, famous Landauer Boutiquer 3 probe conductance experiment. Again a current goes from lead gamma to lead alpha because the chemical potential here is higher, chemical potential here is lower and the lead beta it makes a contact, physical contact. But it doesn't exchange current because its chemical potential has been so adjusted. A much studied phenomena in mesoscopic physics and this is the standard expression for the three probe conductance formula that can be experimentally measured and theoretically calculated in terms of all these partial conductances and conductance is basically e square by h times the scattering probability. Now what we will really pick on in this work, in this talk is that this expression can be rewritten in terms of this hierarchy of density of states. So there are three terms, you can see this is the local partial density of states and he, this one has emissivity, injectivity, local density of states etc. Again if I make the coupling go to zero then what you measure is the coherent two probe conductance of uh, Landauer whereas if the voltage contact makes a contact but does not draw a current then you get these additional terms which means this is a negative term. This means this is due to decoherence or loss of coherent electrons. And once again you see that this quantity can be designed to be negative as this book has proved. And the, uh, uh, the lost coherent electrons they cannot escape because the lead beta does not draw any net current. So they are re-injected and this fraction contributes to, ga contributes to gamma to alpha uh, conductance. This is an incoherent term. To understand that of course you can write that term separately and then you can see if you, if this is the fraction that goes from gamma to alpha then this will be the fraction that goes from gamma to gamma you see here the alpha this this term is just this term and if i replace this alpha to by gamma then this is the coherent electrons that are reflected by uh, the incoherent electrons the reinjected electrons that go back to gamma and that can be simplified simplified to show you that LDL local density of states cancels out and only rho i is left which means the at zero temperature of course uh, the chemical potential has to be so adjusted that it balances the rho i of this point r the injectivity of this point r. So that can be easily interpreted physically no problem but once again if, if this term becomes negative this is a coherent term loss of coherent conductance this term will strongly depend on Aronoff bohm flux and other coherent uh, preserving effects and that term can be isolated and it, its negativity can be confirmed. So the, if you confirm the negativity of the local density of state, local partial density of states then, then it means the electrons are going back in time. Also it is a, uh, means these electrons moving back in time are behave like positrons we know that so it can attract other electrons and of course in condensed matter physics there will be no annihilation but they can 
annihilate each other's charge charge they cannot annihilate each other's mass or energy but they can also definitely annihilate each other's charge and can form a bound state other way to interpret is that this is the count and you count and count to a negative number and if you put electrons in this negative number of states then that behaves like a positive charge of cloud so that should be experimentally detected and that that should be a candidate for electron electron attraction and that should also be an indirect evidence of the fact that signals can propagate in time of course if you say signals can propagate back in time then one comes across the grandfather's paradox and we haven't touched that subject much it's an open problem in physics but the problem has been definitely solved in neuroscience which says that even if you come face to face with your great grandfather you don't have the free will to kill your great grandfather because the will is definitely driven proven to be driven and here apart from publishing the book we have also published them in some scientific papers and that is the end of our talk and Thank you very much.